Hey, welcome to Bent TV's Quiz Zone. I'm Michael Sue. Tonight is the second in the mini segment series called Bent in Business, and we look at Keith Trees and David Sherry, business partners in the wall. Here it is. We're at a cafe here. We're open during the daytime only, and we specialise in coffee. We sell toasted tea days and cakes. We keep it fairly simple. We don't have a kitchen as such, so yeah, that's what we do basically. We're actually um, on the corner of Nelson and Carlisle Street. Right. We're just at the back of an old butcher shop. So I'm originally from Hobart. Yeah. And I've been in Melbourne for about 14 years. And yeah, living in Hobart, the gay scene was a bit underground, so I just wanted to come to a, a bigger city, and um, yeah, Melbourne was the place. Check out the action, find yourself a man. Get a bit of action and get a bit of man, exactly. Wasn't much of that in Hobart. <laughs> And have you, have you found either of those two things now? Um, yes, I have. I've actually I've got a man. I've uh, been going out with Drew for nearly four years now. And uh, there's a bit more action here than, than in Hobart. Um, and a typical day here would be I come in at 7 o'clock and um, we set up the, the cafe. Um, customers normally come in about 7.30. And it's, it's just basically doing the coffees and the food all day. Um, for, for 12 hours. Six degrees were more, um, we, Keith and I were both into their style of design and um, just were into the concept of recycled materials and um, you know they come up with some pretty funky sort of things and ideas and uh, we sort of also knew them too so that was another, another thing but um, yeah we're really happy with the result, they've done a great job. And initially it was like a, um, it was a kosher butcher's outlet. Yeah, well it was a kosher butcher, it was operating I think about two years prior to what we had it. Um, and then it, um, I think there was some fires or something, but what Six Degrees are good at is um, using what they find in the actual site and also bringing in some of their own recycled materials, so um, it's sort of a meshing of the two. And um, yeah, so it's often a lot cheaper to do it that way too. Yeah. And finally, what advice would you give to others, especially young people or queer young people wanting to go into business? Um, just have a clear vision about what you want to do, research your market, make sure it actually exists, and then just go for it and, you know, and um, be passionate about your idea and, um, yeah, and just follow it. Yeah. I think the most difficult problem that we have here are, are difficult customers as such. Um, yeah, we, we only put up with what's fair and reasonable and if a customer's being very difficult, um, we certainly put them in their place. <laughs> I started Globe, it was back in 92 now, and I did that with a friend of mine. And basically it was a, well we started off as a little cafe at the front and then we developed the bar down the back, um, which was, it was good, it was sort of an alternative place to go to um, from Commercial Road and the back bar was quite a special little place and it still is as far as I know. If at all, does being gay have an impact on your business? Uh, difficult question. It's, uh, I'm sure it does. Um, we get a lot of gay people in as a result of, of myself being gay and, and some of the staff being gay um, and it's, it's a good space for them to hang out as a result and I think they come and support us because we are gay. Um, being gay, um, I think it uh, makes you a bit more broad-minded, a um, bit more probably outgoing as well. Um, sort of anything goes a bit more than the norm, I think. Right. So there's like a bit of tomfoolery and hanky-panky that goes on at work? Oh, lots, yeah. What advice would you give to others, especially young people, or even young um, gay, lesbian, bi, transgender people who want to go into business? Um, first of all, you've got to know your product inside out. 
Um, I know a few people that have opened up cafes and they don't really know what they're doing or what they're selling. Um, secondly, get the financials um, online. Make sure that you know exactly you know, where your money is going to go and how much you're going to spend. And also, once the business is actually operating, still make sure that you keep a track of the financials. Um, we do like a, a profit and loss here every Monday. We know exactly where each dollar is going or near enough to. And I think that's important. Too many people just leave the financials to the account and then get either the good or the bad news when it's too late. Um, probably lastly, maybe go into business with one other person. Um, I think that works well. If it's more than one person, it can be quite difficult because you know there's too many people wanting to make the decisions. But it's uh, it's good because it means that you can always bounce ideas off each other. Um, it's good so you can have days off and holidays as well. Thank you, Keith. Oh, thank you, Michael. But come this way. I've just got something to show you. He's got something to show us. Okay. 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 Lead the way. Do you like that? <laughs> wow. Um. All right, now get in here. This is a spanking room. <laughs> Come on. Gay guys, gay girls, hey, how you doing, how's it hanging? Welcome back, I'm Michael Sue, and tonight is the final in a three-part segment series called Bent in Business. We're outside the home of Sylvie Tai and Sylvie Tai Designs, where she operates from home. So we're going to be going in shortly to surprise her. Come on this way. Hey, Sylvie! It's Michael Sue and Matt Esser from Bent TV. Hello. Hi! Hi. Hi. You're looking glamorous. Oh, well, I just threw something on for the day. Right, can you call me back? Don't come in. Give me a little, give me a little peck. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your background. Background? Gee, there's so much to cover, but I'll try to be quick, Michael. <laughs> well, I came from Malaysia with my family. And, uh... Well, I never followed the trend of being a nice Chinese girl, but I did help out my parents' Chinese restaurant. I did town planning for two years, which is the most unfavorite thing I ever did. Didn't know what I was doing. I had a lovely time, but didn't know what the hell town planning was about. But I did like the trees on Royal Parade. <laughs> and then um, failed, which is shocking for a Chinese to fail. Got into design, which I wanted to do in the first place. So I got into Swinburne. They failed me after the year, the bastards. <laughs> However, I got into pit, crawled in by the back door, and eventually finished. But that degree, that, like, the whole study took seven years, so I think I'm kind of over it, really. What does my business do? Well, that's an interesting one, because every time someone asks me, I always have to pause for a couple of seconds. But basically, mine is design-based. I'm a graphic designer. That's my background. But I, I design and wholesale giftware products to stores. So it ranges from gift and homewares, tools and you know, home accessories, pet wear, etc. And I can also do corporate gear. When did your business first start and what inspired you? Well, my business actually came out of the recession. So back in the early 90s, I always think that, you know, th bad things happen in three, sometimes to end up good. I lost my job, got retrenched, lost my girlfriend of four and a half years. That was a bit bad. And lost my money at Pyramid. However, out of that, I think good things came up because I decided I couldn't be bothered looking for a job. There was nothing out there. I would just hawk my wares, which I did, you know, way back when, selling cards and things. So I did that for about 18 months. I did handmade cards and got a jigsaw out, felt really butch, made trays, sanded stuff, and um, yeah, started from there before I started mass producing other things. Tell us about the, the girlfriend thing. The girlfriend thing? Well, fortunately, I have one. Well, I was watching Entertainment Tonight repeat from last night. That looks pretty cool. Now I'm watching the world at home. Describe a, a, a day and also a week in the life of um, your work. Okay, maybe I'll just start with the day. It does vary from day to day because it's 
you know, it depends on how much work I put into creating my week. But it usually starts with me getting up when I want to, not too late, not too early, because I don't like to work too hard. And then I go and check my emails after a cup of tea. That usually takes about an hour. And that's usually morning tea time. So then I think, I better make some appointments. <laughs> so then I make some appointments. And then my appointments always work around who I'm having lunch with. So it's always make my appointment before or after lunch. Have a bit of lunch. Have an appointment maybe in the afternoon. Which I've made from the week before. Because it usually takes about a week. And then it's time to check my emails in the afternoon. <laughs> then the day is over. <laughs> But most of the time people don't, don't think I work very hard for them because they don't see me because I'm sort of here juggling it all. And also it's a bit of dispatching, chasing people for money, all the less glamorous things that one has to do when one has their own business. What are some of the challenges or problems you're faced with? Um, I think the, the main problem for me is um, motivation and being able to you know, keep the spirit and energy level up after so many years. After being the new kid on the block for the first couple of years, you know, the ability to maintain your energy level for the next X amount of time and still be in business. Sylvie, if at all, does being lesbian have an impact on your business? Definitely not an adverse one anyway. I mean, I don't ad advertise the fact that I am, a, you know, a dyke. I hate that word lesbian. <laughs> but, um, What's yeah, that? I hate that word lesbian. It just reminds me of lizards. <laughs> Lizards and lesbians. Okay. Well, would you but like no, that? no, it doesn't really have an effect on me. I mean, I, I tell people if I want to, but really, not really. If anything, it makes you a little bit out there because you know you have to be a little bit more assertive as a gay person anyway. I think to have your spot in society. Okay, and briefly, um, what advice would you give to others, especially young gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people who want to go into business? I like to have a good dress sense and a good attitude. <laughs> have a bit of fun. And you have to have a bit of confidence. And really, seriously, you need a bit of financial backup. I think I was lucky that I had savings. I didn't get any help from anyone. But you just have to be careful what you're doing. My, my style is a bit organic, which may not suit everyone. So for some people that don't quite know what they're doing, I think they probably need to go and do a business class, which I did, but I didn't pay attention to. They should fly business class. No, they should do a business class. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> lovely red blossoms. Yellow daffodils. Oh, not another shed. Say again. This is a shed that everyone needs. Okay. There's always a treasure trove of surprises. Right. Come with me. <gasps> wow. This is where it all happens. Michael, you step this way. Okay, you hold the microphone. Okay. Wow. Just to show you, you know, I actually do a bit of work. I play to do, but I've got to pack my cards, put away my dog bowls, you know, pack all my shower caps this afternoon, and pack all my boxes. Yes, you check that out. Okay. <laughs> looking good, Michael. Looking good. I'll get you a cup of tea, all right? Oh, my God, look for you. No! That, that's your work for today, Michael, I think. I think you need to earn your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>